Hey, hunting family, you are tuning into the Tracks and Tackle podcast, brought to you by Menser Outdoors. family welcome back to another episode of tracks and tackle i'm your host the arrow eagle and today we got a special treat for you uh we're gonna be thrilled to welcome back one of our friends and uh turning guest to the show justin barrick justin joined us last time to talk about turkey hunting and the joys of teaching our children the art of hunting and today he's back to recap how his hunting season went and share some incredible stories and insights cool thing about Justin is he's not just a seasoned hunter with a little bit of knowledge, but he is also a representative from Interstate Garage Doors, our amazing sponsor for the Tracks and Tackle podcast. We want to give a shout out to Interstate Garage Doors and to the entire team for their continued support of the show. Um, so get ready to dive into some thrilling hunting tales, learn some valuable tips, and hear firsthand of Justin's season unfolded. And as always, whether you're an experienced hunter or you're just getting started, this episode is going to be packed with inspirational, practical advice. Sit back, relax, buckle up. Let's get into it with Justin Barrick. We did this one time <laughs> we set up and we recorded for like an hour and a half, two hours. And like three of the cameras weren't running. One of them ran out of batteries. Like, Hey, we're just, ha- we're just, well, you texted me that the next day. We we're just like having the, fun. Like Maybe the it was week after something like that. that. We were time. like, Hey man, we're going to do it over again. We're recording. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, and, and that night I was getting like, my phone was recording like it is one of the camera angles now. And it was getting blown up, like phone calls and emails and emergency stuff. And um, it was on the other side of the room. So I had no, but we were just, you know, we were having a good time. So anyway, uh, Justin, Justin Barracks with us today on Tracks and Tackle. And um, appreciate you taking a little bit of time coming back, man. Yeah, in a little bit. So um, I don't even know where to start because last time we got to talking, we were talking about turkey turkey season. We were talking about uh, the kids, you know, seeing them be successful and that sort of thing. But uh, for anybody that hasn't been part of or <clears throat> heard that last uh, episode, why don't you just tell a little bit about who you are coming in here representing Interstate Garage Doors and uh, appreciate your partnership with the uh, show as well. Yeah. Uh, my name's Justin. Um, he's here, South Central Pennsylvania. Just always sort of a typical country. Country hick from around here, riding the roads, fishing, hunting, whatever. Um, married for 18 years now, I guess, almost. Monday. Monday being Big 18 day. years. And uh, um, got three kids, 13-year-old, 10-year-old daughters, and then a two-and-a-half-year-old boy. So uh, the girls... They do some hunting and fishing with me, and it's a good time. So you've been married 18 years? It'll be 18 years on. I better get the math right. Ooh, this, yeah, I know. This is one that she'll, on the she'll hear this. This is on the record. We know she'll be Monday. listening, too. Monday, the 22nd. So I'm just trying to think how long we've known each other. Probably longer than one. I mean, I, well, it's gotta be. I didn't know you guys before you were married, though. Yeah. So when did you start coming you, to Trio you, Lake? You might have been um, newlyweds. When did you start at Trio Lake? I that would have, that, that's where we met, so that's where it would have been. Yeah, um, that's a great question. I want to say, and i got to get the math the right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say it was probably late 2000s, somewhere around there, you know. So you guys must have been fairly newlywed whenever I met you. Yeah. Cool. I didn't realize that. 
Very good. She's a saint. Yeah, I know. I don't know. I mean, we know you, and, and I know That's her. That's what I'm told. Anyway. So, I guess <laughs> enough people say it, I'll believe it. Right, right. So um, let's let's get into it, man. I appreciate you like sort of carving a little bit of time out for us because um, long story short, it's been busy this summer. I haven't been able to get you on the show. How you doing, Hollywood? Why don't you just to say hello to everybody before we dive in? Hey, hunting family. I'm doing great. Uh, just like you, time's hard to find uh, the summer, uh, doing a lot of fishing, um, unwinding, just spending time with loved ones, family, friends. There's always something going on. If you want to make plans with me, you got to book it like three or four weekends in advance. Um, yeah, just enjoying the summer. It's hot out lately. Air condition feels great, but just trying to get outside more and, you know, enjoy it. But yeah, fun time. I just took a a two day camping trip, three day camping trip turned into a two day camping trip, but, um, love camping, love being outdoors. Went up to uh, world's end state park, freaking beautiful, no cell reception, no nothing, but, um, it's middle of July. (laughs) It was hot. I mean, so hot. And, um, yeah, so the trade off living in the wild is I'm thinking, (laughs) I'm thinking these animals out here, they deal with it. I got to be able to deal with it. But um, I, I got to say, I'm I'm happy to be sitting in front of a fan or sitting by the pool. And even when I came home to the pool, we got rained out on the last day and um, had an awesome day. You know, great hiking, waterfalls, took our dogs with us, swimming in the streams, uh, hanging out and everything. Got back and uh, made an early dinner. And I'm glad we did because thunderstorm rolled in. And just, I wasn't, we were tent camping. I wasn't staying where we were with the winds. But That's know. what I was going to ask you, where you stayed. Because we go up there to the boat festival every right? stay in the, the rustic cabins. And it's it's awesome. Up there. Yeah, so we just, did, we just did like regular family camping right there on the park. And um, actually, we got an awesome site because we had the dogs with us. They put you off into the corner. Mm-hmm. And um, so we didn't have somebody right up next to us. Had a, a huge huge campsite and um you know it's it's an adjustment to sleep out in the wild which i love like i love hearing the the forest go to sleep i love hearing the forest wake up and uh literally there's a creek right across the road from where we are at so you can hear the water run and stuff but they're doing construction on that road too so about 6 a.m you hear these um, these dump trucks bringing in uh, hot asphalt and everything. There was and no you're sleeping. You're right there. In. You're you're. I was pretty I mean, much on the road. We were right next to the road. Yeah. yeah so there's no sleeping in, and um, then just the heat and everything on top of it. So we go out. And we try to we try to hike, but um, Sarah she drives me and uh, taking the dogs along. I leash them up. They're like they're yeah. like my pack dogs. They drag me up the hill and everything. But we found some. It wasn't real busy. It wasn't real crowded. Um, but the rainstorm came in and, and cut us short our, our last night. So um, that's what we've been doing. That's what we've been up to. And that's why we haven't been recording. Yeah. Sitting here, I realize one of us is not like the others. You might think it's me because I'm sitting here coming off work and I got my blue collar on. But we talked a lot about turkey and it's the turkey apex predator that's sitting across from us. So we, we talked a lot with Turkey here about Justin. I'm eager to talk to him about a season. We got some pictures sent to us. So I know he's had some action, but I'm eager to sit here and dive in to, to see how his turkey season went and to hear some stories. Yeah. No, it was a it was a good season. Well, we you know, it's one of those deals where if you tell me afterwards this is what happened? You take it. There was a lot of dead time in between the the few really good days, um, but it, it was definitely a successful season. Didn't get to hunt as much as I normally do. A lot of that was, well, I'd say, work was definitely part of that. And then it's just getting older every year. It's harder and harder to get up every day. Between, I mean, if we hunt Maryland, we're up at two thirty. Um, and then you're hiking, so it's getting older. Uh, not my shape's not getting any better, <laughs> so it, it gets it gets tougher. Yeah. So now you and both your daughters had some luck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
we, uh, I got bird PA and, uh, that was a pretty cool hunt. And then they each actually, they doubled up well, one night on some birds that I hunted most of the season. And then I hunted with my younger daughter a few times. And the birds just, you know, turkeys are turkeys. I mean, we talked about it the first time. The first thing to know about turkey hunting is there's nothing you don't know. Um, they kind of, they do what they do and you can make the right play sometimes. And there's, there's people out there that know what to do, but still those things, they do what they do. And, uh, you know, you, you can throw everything you have at them. It might work. It might not. Yeah. I know we, um, we were sitting here last time we recorded and we were talking about, we we're starting to geek out. It was getting close to time and we were, Really, we had the session uh, scheduled so that we could sit down and talk before season started because we knew once season started, nobody's going to be available. Mm-hmm. Um, I got I got two things on my mind because it wasn't long after we talked last time you started sh- sending us pictures, you know, successful pictures. Um, point one, you got your bird pretty early in the season. Yeah, I want to say I don't know if it was the first week. It was kind of the end of the first week or the second week in the PA season because we'd been hunting Maryland and Maryland, I don't know, April 10th, something like that is like the youth weekend. And Lily and I, we hunted hard that weekend. Um, just couldn't get into anything, uh, a lot of hiking. Um, and then Maryland comes in like that next weekend and mm-hmm. then there's a week, something like that. This year was a weird year, I think, too, where there was a little more time in between. But so it wasn't like the begin the first week that we were turkey hunting. But I want to say it was maybe the first or second week uh um first season. Yeah. That uh I got the I got the lucky the one time I got lucky this year. <laughs> well there's the, I've gotten success early in season. I mean the anticipation is is what it's all about. Like looking forward to season coming around. Yeah. And then on top of that, the sitting around telling the stories after season's done or after the hunt's over, like that's the fun part. The harvesting is the thrill. But, you know, so I wanted to get your take on being successful earlier in the in the year, you know, because it does give you a lot of free time. But I know you put that to use because, uh, you, like you said, your girls doubled up. And doubling up is, is a big deal too. Like, I mean, whether it doesn't really matter what you're hunting, but if you're hunting with somebody else and you guys both have success on the same day, like that's a special, special day too. So kind of a two sided, uh, I'm throwing this out here to get some, some, your, your hot take on it, but, um, success early in the season, how did that impact the rest of your season? And then what was that like, uh, the girls doubling up? Because I, I don't know if that has ever happened before or not. So it, it uh, obviously TA you can get a second tag. I get a second tag because mm-hmm. I turkey hunt fair amount. With some changes at work and stuff this year, I knew it was a little more. It was a little more on my plate, you know. Um, and I have the freedom to to go when I can go, but you still have a conscience about you know if you got work to get done, you got to get work done. Um, so I, I had my second tag in the first week, I think. The, the day before I killed the bird, I was hunting some birds where the girls doubled that they were there and they just, I mean, they, they would gobble and you could work them. And, but where this property is, they, they fly down onto the neighboring farm a lot. And that's kind of where, where they stay, but it's close to this other farm that I hunt that we've had a lot of success at over the years. So I hunted there that morning. Like often, I often do. I'll hunt right away. If I don't get into anything, I go to work and I'm there on time. You right. Know, early. Yeah. Fine. But uh, I went to check the other farm, just see what was going on. And as I was pulling back the lane, I looked up and there's a, a section of dirt field and there stands a long beard. And he kind of, you know, worked back like they, they do just back over the hill to where you could see the periscope sticking up over the top <laughs> and, you know, I drove back, turned around, and said, okay, you know, tomorrow morning I'll come check this guy out and see. And that's the thing about kids. Like, with with my girls, I am, um, we talked a little bit about this, too. You want them to have as good of experience as you can. So, 
I saw this. I'm like, okay, well, I'll go kind of hunt it tomorrow. But I don't like to just blast in and and try to kill stuff. I, I'd rather I try to hunt up out mm-hmm. and see what's happening. You know, said if I don't kill them today, I'm not going to mess it up. You know, maybe tomorrow, whatever. Or the girls can go on a Saturday. You know. So I went the next day, and and I got out of the truck, and I walked back. They always roost in the bottom, and uh, like there's a cliff in the back, and there's two main hollows that come up, and they roost down along the creek, gobble, fly down down there, and then they'll work up into the fields at some point. So I kind of was starting to walk back towards the back to see where they were roosting because when I checked for youth day, they were in a little different place. Um, so, well, there's a truck guy had pulled <laughs> back and parked. And I, I know a couple of other people are allowed to hunt there, <laughs> but like just a different mindset, yeah. you know, it, like just pull back wherever and then they, they go in, mm-hmm. which maybe they don't have the time that I have different philosophy. That's, that's cool. But I'm like, well, I'm here now. So I kind of worked back out, didn't want to go back and mess anything with them up, went back and set up in the, in the edge of the field, just thought, okay, beautiful morning, watch sunrise. Yon and rings. it was, couldn't have been five, yeah, yawn rings. Could have been more than five minutes, maybe. Like, it's getting to where, and I hadn't heard a gobble yet, mm-hmm. not a gobble. And, and I, so I know, I know they're down in there. The, the Whoever's hunting is down in there. About time, maybe flat gun crack down in the bottom of the hall. Well, you know, now we're, we're definitely done. But I was sitting there and, um, I don't know. I guess it was about seven o'clock. Work starts about eight. That morning I didn't have anything pressing. So I thought I'm just going to sit here comfortable. Uh, it got to about five after seven and. Thought I heard a gobble. Yeah, kind of go to work here. So it makes it easier, or just sit a little bit longer when you hear it. Yeah, think. yeah. And I thought in my head, um, you know, like ah, you you want to hear a gobble. You're trying, like I'm trying to talk myself into not going to work. Right. You know, right. right. So I hadn't heard a gobble all morning. You just heard. You just heard a gobble. Okay. I said, all right, get to twenty after something like that. We're mm-hmm. like seven nineteen. He gobbles. Again, it was closer. Was called. He gobbled. Um, ended up working him. You know, I mean, he answered my call. Thought, okay, great. Uh, just sat there and, and just sort of relaxed, let things happen. I know they're probably coming up to the fields anyway. Um, saw him. He's up there. He's strutting back and forth about 80 yards away along the edge of the field. Um and at this point, I'm calling as quiet as I can call, just real. I had a one hand decoy out, and he ends up working across the tall alfalfa into the dirt. And he's probably 45 yards away. 40's my 40's my line. Right. Uh, we talked about it last time. The equipment will do it, mm-hmm. but I want to. I feel like 40. I've beaten you. Outside 40, like it just the equipment's doing. Don't want to leave it up the chance. Yeah. So. Long story short, I mean, 30 minutes, he's inside 50 yards. And I had a hen pop out. She's around me, and um, she started to leave. And I, I was able to make a move and, and kill him. But that here we are, first week. You know, one of the tags is is filled. Great hunt. Amazing. You know, he gobbled. He only gobbled a few times right there, but watched him strut for 40 minutes. In I mean, the entire time. What more could so, you really so, ask for? Ex- exactly. So... But one tag, you only got one left. So, yeah, it does change your, yep. you know, if you don't have a tag, you can't hunt, you know, anymore. But yeah, I got one tag, and it's like, you want to kill, but I, and I don't want to be done. So you got <laughs> Maryland, and then there's, you know, figuring things out for the girls. And so I hunted, but I hunted kind of half-hearted. I hunted thinking, you know, you're trying to kill something, but on the other hand, if I don't, it's okay. Yeah. You know? And uh, and so that that really that's what happens. Then it kind of takes the 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 girls sort of take over a little bit in your in your preference. So deer season, I think, is is different from turkeys because you're trying to for us it's freezer. You know, freezer's the objective. Um, 
and one doesn't do it. So that doesn't slow slow me down. Um, if anything, it makes me want to go get another one because if I'm going to butcher one, I might as well butcher two. <laughs> um, everything's dirty. You yeah. Know? So, but turkeys, it's kind of like it does sort of put you in that. And I couldn't get to Maryland as much as I'd like to. So, um, there were some mornings I did sleep in. Normally I wouldn't. I regretted those. Um, two in the morning is pretty early though. I mean, it is, it is. We, the the biggest uh, the one day that I went down to Maryland, Josh, my brother Josh had killed a bird that Saturday or Sunday, and there was a couple. There was another group of birds down there, so I got up one day. Got up at like one forty five. Left, got to the gate at four. Sat there till like I think four twenty four twenty five. Got out. I mean, nobody else came to that gate. There's one way in, one way out. Mm-hmm. Nobody came in. I'm like, sweet, got the whole hike 35 minutes back to the spot, was in the spot 20 minutes before gobbling light, you know, just real easy. And right about gobbling time, here came two headlamps up the trail. And I, that's a tough, that's a tough morning, you know. Um, but uh, I ended up, I didn't kill that morning. They did, which was cool for them. Um but uh so you know you know who the guys were or you ended up running into i don't i know they were late that's all that's all i know but it it's as part of turkey like the turkeys were there that's like our 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 trout season you know you get up in the middle of the night so you get to the hole and Mm -hmm. and have it secure but uh then like you know 10 minutes before eight you got some somebody pulling up in the parking and you know a bunch of trucks driving by because uh you got you got to do the work you know, but that is a little bit different than turkey hunting because you have people walking around, you know, that busts your hunt up. And that's that's the thing. Like this this specific spot, the road comes back and I was off well when, you know, there's one finger ridge that goes back here, like main ridge system, and then there's another ridge system. Mm-hmm. Um and so I was just off the main trail at my spot and they came up and you know, I kind of flashed them with my light and they stood there for twenty, thirty seconds, which to me like they're, I'm thinking, are they, you know, are they going to leave? Fair amount of real estate back there. I wasn't mad that they didn't leave. You know, honestly, when they kept going on the main trail, I was like, okay, good. You know, I'm, I still have my, my yeah, thing. But sure. they've gone that way. So I'm, I'm here. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not, it, turkey hunting, we talked about the first time. Like, it's just not, I'm not comfortable. I don't, if I don't know who it is, I'm not comfortable with it. So, well, they went, and I mean, they weren't going. The bird starts just hammering over there. And they ended up, you know, he's he's hot, and five minutes after fly down-ish, you know, gun cracks, and they're hooping, hollering, you know. <laughs> and, yeah, I mean, it, awesome for them. It'd be a lot nicer if I didn't get up at 145, drive two hours, sit in the truck, you know, just sit there longer than I needed to to make sure I was the first one at the gate, like, back in. But that's that's part of it. Yeah. You know? And so they killed the turkey. The worst part about the morning, the birds I was on, they didn't gobble much. And I knew all along. I mean, as soon as I heard these birds start to gobble and heard that bird gobble, and I was on the wrong bird. I'm, I'm in the wrong place. And I thought I had, A, first one at the gate. And then whenever they kept walking, I was like, ah, I got the good spot anyway. So... Not that morning. Just the way it works. There's no crystal ball. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we say in our line of work, lessons learned. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So they ended up, they killed that turkey hoop and holler 15 minutes, 20 minutes maybe after they left. I was sitting there and that was a cool morning. Um, I saw for the first time a, a fisher in a while. Oh, yeah. Like I was sitting there and maybe 70 yards away, I see this thing coming it just looks like a giant oversized ferret you yeah know, whatever yeah I'm like, what is that look at my binoculars like, holy cow it's a fisher that's cool he's standing there and all of a sudden he starts coming towards me i'm like oh, he's gonna come up i got you know i'm gonna get good video out of nowhere comes this red fox and like chases it up a tree thing climbs like i mean they're made to do yeah it. they're designed to yeah so that that was cool, but then this other bird fires up maybe twenty minutes after they're hooping and hollering over in the same general spot, and he's he's gobbling like crazy, 
And it's and I'm so I'm waiting for the gun to crack a second time. Nothing, 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 nothing. It got to the point where I had to go, I had to be to work like 11, 10, 11, mm -hmm. but I had something out Bedford way. So I'm kind of out that way. Well, I never, that bird's hot, but I, I can't, I can't go over there. You know, there's somebody back there. Mm -hmm. So I ended up hiking out to the truck, no truck there. So they, 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 they sprinted back in late, killed their turkey and then rolled out. And this bird is over there just screaming his face off, saying, hey, come, come carry me so out. He was ready to die, and I, you didn't know? You no, know, Yeah, it's just one way or the other. And I wouldn't change it, you know, because if they had still been around there somewhere, it's a, that's a, it's a dangerous thing. Yeah, I had a really good hunt. Um, I got out a lot this year. Number one, I was motivating myself, and, I'm, you know, we talk about getting bit by the bug. So I was really eager to get out for turkey. And then number two, like we talk about with all these people, I can't be this guy that sleeps in and doesn't get out at all. So it's like right. my fans, I wanted to get out there for him. But I had this one hunt. I did everything wrong. But I got out to my spot a little bit later. I heard a bird, kind of got in a position where I was in a good spot. And yeah, uh, there comes this fox. And it's beautiful. I'm sure we all can relate here. And when the animals don't know you're out there and you're just in their, you're in their home. So you can, you know, just trotting by, not even to worry in the world. So I got to watch this fox for a little bit. Um, and then shortly after, another one came out. But, yeah, just so beautiful, just this bright red in early spring. Um, I'm sure it had an impact on the bird that I was on. But, yeah, just kind of being present where your feet are and enjoying the, hey, this is why we do it moments. Yeah. All right. So I'm sitting here at work. It's turkey season. I'm, you know, slaving away here at the desk. And I get a text, and it's a, a picture. This guy's at the casino, and there's, there's, he's got birds, like, walking through the parking lot at the casino. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, like, everywhere he goes, he's hearing birds, he's seeing birds. And, um, you know, you put your time in, and you, you did have a little bit of uh, success in the, you know, bird category as far as seeing them. You didn't, you didn't fill your tag this year, but, um, you know, really impressed with how much time you put in and, it paid off because you, I mean, you were, you were scouting the land pretty good too. Yeah. I um, spent a lot of time out in the, the scouting. Unfortunately, I, I should have scouted more, but we can play the time card. Um, there's one spot that I found that I thought, you know, I've been seeing birds on my drive and walks through. I was like, I'm going to get set up here. And that spot, nothing in the morning when it came around. It's always the evening when I saw them, but still good to get out. And similar to you, I would get out before work. And really, yeah, if you get up early and get out there, you have all the time in the world before, you know, I need to be in the office at nine. You yeah. know, maybe you have to be there a little bit earlier, but until that sun comes up, it just feels like forever. You have an eternity. Yeah. To, to nine o'clock. I mean, there's so much time yeah. before nine o'clock in the spring. So I didn't realize that, but I was really thinking, <laughs> what if I do have action? You know, I'm going to have to walk across the parking lot to Walmart, get a cooler and ice and, I'll be in the parking lot with some people giving me some weird looks, but we'll be making memories and I'll be thrilled and I'll be pumped. Yeah. That's part of the story, right? Yeah. There that's I was. It. That's just part <laughs> of the story. There I was walking across the parking lot with a cooler full of ice. Our, our one hunting tote that we put our clothes in was because I didn't take the cooler. I killed the turkey and needed something to put ice in the turkey in. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to use it. Yeah. Necessity yeah. is the mother invention, you know? So, yeah, I mean, I was getting texts from Hollywood of uh, turkeys in the parking lot. Like, wherever he was going, he was sending me pictures of birds. I'm getting texts from Justin, you know. He's just sending video of, you know, the, the hollow he's hunting in over the open field. And you can just hear the birds, you know, talking and everything. And I'm, I'm sitting here slaving away at, at the job. But, um, you know, that's what that's what it's all about. You know, you have some success. It's like you shared the story. Those guys, they came in late. They got lucky that day. Um, sometimes you put in a ton of time and it doesn't turn out the way that you want it to. But th there are other times where you can you're at the right place at the right time and uh, the stars align for you. Yeah, there's there's days that you can't get it right. There's nothing you can do to make it right. And there's, we've all had times where we were successful on a hunt and we had no reason to be. It just happens that way. So, um, so did you get your hunting license yet? I did. I did. Yeah. So you're all set. How about you? 
I'm all set. I'm ready for uh, the next uh, doe tag process to come through. I believe it is it the 22nd, July 8th. There you go. That's Wait. non-residence. Wait. July 22nd. Yep. Round two. I'm in so round two. Monday. Yeah, July 22nd, 8 a.m. That is oh, on Monday. Monday. So I was at Walmart. This was uh, Friday. Oh, I hate the literature. I was late to get mine, <laughs> but I don't know what the guy did, but he must have hit it and it didn't print. Then he hit it again and it printed two copies. Man, he wouldn't give me that other one I asked. Uh, that was an error, man. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought it was buy one, get one free. But now I uh, I don't know what clicked with me. Maybe it's just more burning passion, this uh, hunting community that we're, we're building here. But you talked about me texting you, and I texted Justin a little bit. I, I, I don't know why I started last year, but I turned on a little schoolgirl. You know, they say don't kiss and don't tell. <laughs> but, um, you know, I'm pumped. I, I think it started with um, the nice uh, <clears throat> buck that I hit in archery. Right. You know, I didn't text Ronnie. I called him. I was like, dude, guess what? You know, I just laid it all out, and I got him fired up. And I was pumped for you, man. That, yeah. It was awesome. And then with seeing Burbs, too, I'm like, Birds in front of me. <laughs> so, yeah, there was a moment, like, I'm texting Justin, like, hey, like, what would you do here? Like, here's what's happening. And I got feedback, and it's appreciative. But, yeah, it just wasn't the wasn't their day. It's it, There's just, they do what they do. And, I mean, like I said, there's people out there that just, that I guess they got a little bit of turkey brain in them that they, they know how to make a move. That's the thing. It's like, if you're willing to move and risk and whatever and it's just for me if i don't know for sure nobody's around I get nervous doing that um, yeah, it's better to be safe but uh yeah you can i mean you can be really aggressive with turkeys um you know i listen to podcast guys down in tennessee where they have the real sharp ridges um there can be a turkey 30 40 yards away from you and you can move all you want if they're just on the back side of the ridge and sometimes that i mean turkeys a lot of times they hear scratching. Mm -hmm. That's enough to, you know, they think it's turkeys moving. And that's a big, that's a big deal. If you're sitting and they're hung up sometimes just scratching in the leaves and you see it more and more, that's as effective a call as any call sometimes. Um, so, you you know, just moving, that's what a real turkey is going to do, right? She's not going to sit at one tree and just yap, 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 yap. She's going to move and she's going to feed when she's moving and you know, so that's uh, that's something you can do, and it works sometimes. But there's there's just days. The birds that the girls killed, there was four long beards. They were roosting again. They roost on the the property that we can hunt. There's a little meadow, and then there's like an open, you know, oak kind of knob, and it drops off on the end. There's big sycamore trees there, and they roost on that knob but they fly straight across the creek into this field, farmer's field. For the five years I've been hunting it, that's, that's what the turkeys do a lot. They flow down on the property that I can hunt, but not many times. I think it's too thick in patches. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they go this way, they're getting thick stuff somewhere. So, um, but these birds every morning, and I mean, you want to hear goblin go because they're there guaranteed and they're gonna they're gonna talk and i took addy there and they just scream and scream and scream and they'll answer your calls and i try everything get in underneath them i mean under them don't call get in get close to them call light um try it back the edge of the meadow just where they can't see a call light call heavy you know, I mean, the eight, ten mornings I hunted them try something different every time. And they, they do what they do. They're they're made for the hens to come to them. But these specific yeah. birds, that's just what they did. They flew down, and they'd stay in the same spot in the field. And we even cut a path through, like, the thick stuff, got down next to the creek, me and Addie one day. And so we could change position on them. Mm -hmm. If they fly down... You know, this is kind of lower, it's level, and I know they cross the creek there because in fall I see them do it a lot. So in the springtime, the composition of the woods is different, but still, they're used to crossing there. You know, so, okay, we're up here all the time, and they just gobble out the field. Well, we, you know, go down to try and just have them going nuts, but their, their instinct says, you come to me, and that's what they're doing. So, um, to, to, 
kill those birds, we um, we actually went. I've never gone and asked the farmer that owns that field, but with with Addie, you know, let let's go ask. So we went. We stopped back the one Saturday. And, Having a uh, kid helps. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, I was you know ten year old girl. Yeah. Like I I thought I yep. thought it would help. Um, and I just honestly driving back, I was just hoping it was a good experience. Well, you're teaching her too, as yeah. you're, you're you're modeling the yes, right way to do. That. Yes, it's great, but just give me a good experience. Yeah, you know. And so we went back, and the guy could have been nicer, absolutely. And I had actually, I said, "Hey, stay in the truck. Let me just think. I had a couple dogs. I was like, make sure. sure the dogs are okay." And yeah. I went, and I told the guy, I said, "Hey, you know, I told who I was. I said, um, I got my daughter in the truck. I said, and we're doing some turkey hunting, and uh, we hunt across the creek. I said, the birds have every day." Like cross on the on the years, and honestly, I was waiting for guns to crack mm-hmm. over there at some point. You know, this was a couple weeks in; it was just shy when you could hunt all day. So I was waiting to hear people shoot turkeys over there some morning. It was every morning they were there, and um, so I thought, well, maybe he doesn't hunt. So we went, and I asked him. I said, before I get her out, you know, I said I want to get her out because I didn't want you to feel like you were pressured. Right. You know, and he, he was super funny. He said, well, look, I, I, I appreciate you stopping and asking. He said, uh, we, we, we hunt him a little bit. He said, and I just, you know, we just bought the farm last year and we kind of this to this point kept it for family. Mm-hmm. I said, I can respect that. You know, that's, that's great. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I'd asked him, I said, I appreciate you, you know, being cool about it and, you know, stopping and asking and stuff. And I said, would you mind? If I got her out and we kind of went through the process again and asked, so she's not afraid to ask. I actually would like her to hear no. Yeah. Yeah. From somebody who's, you know, cool about it because we've all asked and had people kind of be unnecessarily rude about it. Right. Um, and that's not something that I want my kids to see because then they're afraid to, you know, I want them to think the worst thing can happen is they say no. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I got her out and, and we asked and he was super cool, super nice. And, you know, just said it again. I said, you know, thank you. She thanked him. And then off we went. And as we were driving out, there's four long beards coming down this way. And, um, but, uh, those birds, as I was hunting them, there was scratching up on that knob. Mm-hmm. Now, if they're not flying down there in the morning, they got to do it sometime, and they're roosting right there. So I was—I I just kind of thought to myself, maybe at night, you know, they come in, they're they're feeding around there, and from there they can fly up from that knob, and instead of flying, you know, that knob's twenty-five feet higher. Sure. Instead of having to fly sixty feet into a tree, they only got to fly forty feet, you know, maybe. So I put a couple cameras up. Sure enough. That's and you know almost every night. That's what they were doing. So you pattern them. Yeah, I mean essentially, and that's I've never been a huge fan of the nighttime hunting. Mm-hmm. Um, being able to hunt them in in the afternoons and stuff. Um, but at this you know at this point, I was getting my butt kicked by them every day. And I, you know, Addie was hunting hard. Um, Lily hunted her to a certain point, and then she kind of checked out a little bit. Um, she was sleeping more when we, well, almost exclusively. Yeah. Sleep. <laughs> and we had, a, we had a couple, you know, chats like, hey. Um, and then. We know some guys like that. Exclusive there's a, sleepers. There's a big debate whether you sleep in your stand or not. Yeah. Some people, they, they swear by it. Yeah. it's. I mean, it's okay. You want to do what you do, but if I'm taking my time. Yep. You know, I, I need to be hunting with somebody if I'm thinking here. So I started, you know, I kind of, Addie always knows, Lily's older, Lily's first. So this, there was like a shift whenever mm-hmm. I said to Addie, hey, you know, you want to go turkey on Saturday? And she was like, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. and it sent a little bit of a message to Lily too. Sure. You know, yeah, she yeah. was kind of, I had actually heard through the grapevine. That she, my brother had asked her, you know, how's turkey hunting going? She said, oh, well, you know, I haven't really been getting out much. Mm-hmm. It's been taken Addy. And Josh was like, well, you know. It's always he, a, he knew. a teaching lesson. Yeah. yeah. She said, well, I guess, you know, I just, you know, I'm asleep 
most of the time. And that's I take Addie out, she stays away. Yeah. So she wants she wants to be there, you know. So anyways, um we have these birds leading up to that Monday when you can hunt all day. And you know, you're you're checking the camera and they're in there. And I'm still hunting them in the mornings, but I'm not hunting them hard. But also, it just it doesn't matter. The one morning I did have them going to where I thought, okay, if if I can do it, I'm I'm killing one of these things. Mm-hmm. Like, and I had them going like crazy, and they were coming closer, going for they were doing the strut back and forth thing. I had made the loop like we planned, um, and just couldn't couldn't get them to to, to budge. So uh, it was that was a Thursday morning. I got pictures of them that night, and I got pictures of them Friday night, and then nothing Saturday night, nothing Sunday night, and Monday night I had planned that he was going to bring Addie up, and I was going to take her hunting, and it was actually my brother Josh had said, listen, you know, you, you take in, I put a blind up and got it, you know, set up and ready, and Josh had said to me, or, you know, you take in, you can take Lily too, right, in case you double." And I honestly hadn't thought about that. Mm-hmm. You know, I was just focused on one, get like one turkey. I was like, yeah, that's a good good idea. So I had Nikki bring them up to me, and we went out, but we hadn't got pictures up for a couple of days. And I was sure that Saturday the farmer finally, because he said, he said, we're going to start hunting them, and when we do, maybe we'll push them up to you. Right, yeah. And I was sure, you know, how your head goes. Um, I was sure that that's, they had hunted them Saturday and killed them. But we went out Monday night. It was hot. The girls, the blind was big enough. You know, the girls were sitting in their chairs. I'm on my knees. I'm too old and fat to be on my knees. Like everything, everything hurts. Um, and we sat there and they were coming in, you know, 640 to 650. Most nights. You know, mm-hmm. Coming in, scratching around on that knob and then flying up. Got to 630. I said, okay, you know. It's open down to the left. It's stick to the right. And I told them, I said, if they come in from the right, which I didn't think they would because of how thick it was, I said, but if they do, it's not going to be a, hey, girls, get ready. It's going to be a... They're on top of you. There's turkey right here. Yeah. And so it got 640, 645, 650, 655. It hit 705 and all. You know, there's just, and I've been calling just every now and then, scratching a little bit, just real, you know, like feeding birds and Mm -hmm. clucks and and stuff like that. And uh, it's about 20 after, Lily actually had said uh, she thought she heard something kind of fixed up, but there's squirrels everywhere there. (laughs) So I've been fooled by a squirrel. Yeah, it's, I mean, they're, they make a racket, and in my mind, we were past the time that they were going to come in. So, sure. yeah. And I told him, I said, you guys need to be ready. Well, Lily's gun sitting up against the side of the line. She was second. We knew, like, Addie shoots first, and she's got her 410, and then Lily has her gun. But Addie sat the whole night gun up on the, the you know, up on the shooting sticks, like, ready. And 722, something like that. I looked, and right there, eight yards away, there's a redhead. Uh huh. And I said, I said, Addie, I said, there's the turkey right here. Get, you know, get it. So she started getting, I got her red dot turned on for her. Lily got her gun up, got the red dot turned on, did everything, you know, and then I seen the second and the third. And so they came in and they're working in towards, I had one lone hen decoy out and they just weren't sure about the whole thing. They were kind of like, you know, they were macho when they're gobbling, mm-hmm. you know, but now, just kind of, I don't know. That's how the boys are. Yep. <laughs> so one one worked up, and I, I told her, I said, get, you know, whenever you can. And she shot and dumped it, and immediately I started doing some fighting purrs and stuff like that. In came the second one. Mm-hmm. Well, then I saw the third one. We didn't see the fourth one, but I did see the third one. And he was just back over the hill, and now I started to think, Obviously, Addie's 410 is a single shot. Lily's is a semi. I put two shells in. Mm-hmm. One for her. And then, you know, one in a million. Well, when I seen this, the third one back there, I was like, oh, cow, dude, this is, this might happen. Can we get three. Yeah. yeah. And so Lily's, you know, waiting and it came in and attacked Addie's. 
And uh, Lily ended up shooting him whenever she shot the bird, you know, sure. Off. But it was just like it it was. It's super, super cool. But like, you know, Addie's 10. She killed her first turkey when she was nine. Lily killed her first turkey when she was nine or 10. You know, like these girls, not many girls are killed, whatever. But I told, I said, how many sisters mm-hmm. do you think did have done what you just did? You know, and the coolest thing about it, I actually. Um, we got out of the blind and went up and I FaceTimed my dad right away. That was the first person that we, we called and I FaceTimed them and the girls, they got the turkeys and they're, you know, you know how siblings are, they're all kicking, <laughs> fighting or whatever. <laughs> like it was just the, the thing I had noticed when I get up there waiting for my dad to answer, like the two girls that can't be five feet away from each other without picking each other, wanting to fight a little bit. Like they're smiling and they're hugging and they're like, it was like, the happiest could be. You know, I just, I remember noticing. Now, the cool thing about it, my dad didn't answer, mm-hmm. but my phone is all busted up. I mean, bad, bad busted up. All the time, I take screenshots now. Sure. Like, I don't know why it happened. Something's just messed up. I, I take screenshots all the time without trying. Not intentionally. It was like three days later, I'm looking through pictures in my phone because we took a bunch of pictures and I had a screenshot when I was FaceTiming my dad and the two girls are just standing there looking at each other Mm -hmm. and they're like smiling and just like the joy, you know, the, the cool, the, the cool experience it was, you know, and they can't even grasp. They don't know. They don't realize, you you know, but still in that moment, the joy that they had, it's, I've been hunting 30, 30 years with my brother. And I can count on less than, you know, this hand, how many times we both were successful on the same night, regardless of what we were hunting, you know? Mm-hmm. So when it happens, when you, when you have success on the same day, um, you know, it's something to celebrate. It's a big deal. And um, when, when you have that type of success early on, you don't realize, yeah. you know, the, the value, the value of that, or at least I put, I put a lot of value on it. Um, you know, I know last year we, we did had a good day hunting together and, um, you know, we might, it might be another 20 years till we have another day like that. Yeah. But hopefully it'll be just a couple months. Right. So but yeah, just the, the raw emotion, like, I don't know. I've seen a, a, two of my buddies doubled up sitting in a blind and me and my other friend, we were out on some trails and just coming back and just seeing the smiles on their faces. Mm-hmm. They're carrying the birds over the shoulder. Like, you just don't forget those moments and how awesome it is. But yeah, that's crazy. You can't see I'm sitting on the edge of my seat here. Listen to this story. <laughs> that was a good one. But yeah, definitely one uh, years past you're not going to forget. And hopefully the girls don't either. Yeah, no, I don't think, I don't think that's that, when I'm old and can't remember much of anything. I'll, that, that'll be burned into my head. Well, hunting family, that's going to do it for us today on this episode of Tracks and Tackle. We hope you've enjoyed hearing Justin uh, share his incredible hunting stories and insights from this spring's uh, turkey season. If you did, take a moment and give us a like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about the podcast. It's your support that helps us continue bringing you exciting and informative content every week. We'd also like to give another shout-out to Interstate Garage Doors for their generous sponsorship. Be sure to visit their website at igdoors.com and tell them the guys from Tracks and Tackle sent you. Be sure to tune in next week for the conclusion of our interview with Justin, and we're going to dive deeper into his hunting adventures and expertise. And as always, hunting family, stay wild as the wind. See you next time.